More and more people file for unemployment benefits in our state. The number of fraudulent claims has also skyrocketed. Between March and April, the state estimates it paid out more than $1.5 million to scammers. Q13's Brandy Cruz, live with what the state is doing to combat this problem. Brandy? Good morning. And this is a challenging situation because you have a scenario where you want to get this money in the hands of people who need it as quick as you can. Well, at the same time, you're seeing this surge in fraudulent claims, what they call imposter fraud. So somebody gets someone's personal information and they go file an unemployment claim using that information. So it's a difficult balance uh, for the Employment Security Department, which is already under a lot of pressure. As you know, right now, Susie Levine, who's the commissioner of ESD, put out a statement yesterday it sounded like saying hey we're trying to do the best we can she said we're digging into the scope and scale of the problem and remain committed to transparency and security meanwhile ESD releasing a few of the things that they're doing to try to help with this entire situation they said uh, you know and we knew this a couple days ago that they're gonna be holding some payments perhaps for one to two days the idea being they just need to make sure that all of the claims are authentic as they continue to investigate all of this. They're also hiring more fraud investigators. They're hiring more staff to be able to man the phones at the fraud hotline to deal with the influx and calls that they're receiving. Uh, and also, just so you know, if you are someone who is filing uh, unemployment or getting these claims every week, it's possible you might have to provide some additional information or verify some information above and beyond what you normally do, just as, again, they try to deal with the influx flocks of fraud that they're seeing at ESD. What are people supposed to do if their personal information has been used to file a fraudulent unemployment claim? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. And the reality is, you know, as much as this is a crime against the state and, you know, stealing from taxpayers, it is a crime against the individuals whose personal information is being used by these fraudsters. So one of the first things I want to say off the bat, Bill, is if you're someone watching and you're entitled to unemployment benefits right now and someone has used your information already to obtain them, you do not have to pay that money back to the state, and you are still going to be able to get the unemployment benefits that you're entitled to. So I don't want you to worry about that. But there are some important steps that you need to take, regardless of whether you need to file for unemployment and your information has been used, or if you don't need unemployment, but you found out that your information is being used. And uh, this guidance being put down uh, in recent days by law enforcement, by prosecutors, just to let people know the steps that you need to take. So first step, contact your employer. Just let them know uh, what's going on. Also, contact the Employment Security Department. Do that uh, by web. There's a form you can fill out online because we know that their phones are absolutely packed right now. And also, th the next steps might seem a little counterintuitive, but uh, call the police department. This is a crime. And should this situation escalate where your personal information is used for more and more things, it's good to have a police report on file with your local jurisdiction. And then report it to the FTC. There's a lot of reasons for that in terms of tracking and monitoring for the Federal Trade Commission, but it also might open up some important um, services that would be available to you as a victim of identity theft. And then this one might be the most important. You need to monitor your credit, uh, get your free credit reports online, but also let the credit reporting agencies know that your information has been used fraudulently because as that situation is being sorted out, what that does is it makes it less likely that your stolen information can be used, for example, to open up a, a credit account uh, on, on your behalf, you know, in your name. And so it seems like, you know, in the middle of when you're dealing with a situation, your identity has been stolen. There's so much going through your mind, but there are some really important steps that the state, that the federal government, and that local police want you to take just to make sure that the situation, if anything, doesn't get any worse. Absolutely. All right, Brandy, thank you. 736 right now. A second person.